In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Baba. And today's gospel should be familiar to us, but at first glance, I feel like this gospel is about fishing. But in truth, it has nothing to do with fishing. It's a test of faith. And it's about honestly assessing the obstacles and the hindrances that are between us and a life that's dedicated to God. So the questions that I want us to contemplate today are, what are the obstacles in the way of our complete obedience to Christ? What are the things that are getting in the way of us truly following our Lord Jesus Christ? So as a recap, let's, let's reflect on what, what happened today. The disciples, who were not yet disciples, had fished all night long and they caught nothing. I, this is not a small statement that they caught nothing. They were fishermen that did not have fish. How would they survive? If they didn't catch any fish, they had nothing to sell or to trade with. If they had nothing to sell or to trade with, they would be left in a very, very difficult situation. How would they feed their families? How would they clothe them? How could a fisherman return to his home after a long night of work with nothing but sweat to show for it? How could this be? So when we hear that they caught nothing, we have to see the significance in that. It's a loaded statement that they caught nothing. So it means that the fishermen were at the brink of despair. They didn't go out to fish for fun. No, they went out for necessity. And so <clears throat> after a long and hard night, their necessities were not even met, not even close, nothing. It was their necessities that were not even met. St. Luke tells us that as Jesus was walking along the shore, he saw two boats by the lake and he decides to get into one of the boats while the men were washing their nets. So our Lord decided that it was time to teach the people who were nearby along the shore. So to the fishermen, this act would have been seen as bold, right? But definitely not considerate. Not considerate of anything they, they had just been through. They were tired. They were grumpy, they were hungry, they were thirsty, and now an uninvited guest decides to jump into one of their boats to teach the people. I mean, that might have been acceptable, but then this same guest pushes it one step further. He tells them, go back to work. Go back to work. They had just finished fishing and they were washing their nets, preparing to go home, disappointed with their heads down. And then our Lord Jesus Christ says, go do it again. Go back to work. You see that the Lord was not inconsiderate. He was not inconsiderate of their needs. He was not inconsiderate of their fears and their desires. He knows that they want rest. He knows they want comfort and food. He knows that their desire is to catch fish because fishing is their livelihood. He knows this, but he knows even more than what's on the surface level. While they think that their deepest desire is the fish, he recognizes that their true desire is to work for something that does not pass away. That's the true desire. But the only way that he can show them a better path is to first bring them through a fierce trial. And it, this trial leads them to question everything. Everything about their lives. We express awe and wonder when we, when we see that the Lord allowed a great number of fish to be put into the, to the, to the net. But we don't express the same awe and wonder at the way our Lord prevented these skilled fishermen from even catching one fish that night. 
This was not by chance. All of it was done by God's providence. Why? For their benefit. In the Christian life, we notice that God works in our lives in miraculous ways. And it seems that this is more so the case when we are pushed to the brink, when we are pushed to despair. That is really what the story is all about. Grown men who are pushed to the very limits, to the edge of despair. And while they're hovering at the brink of total failure, the Lord asks more of them. Go out again. Go, go to the depth. Let down your nets one more time. Here at this moment, the soon-to-be disciples are forced to make a very, very difficult decision. Here is the reply of, of St. Peter on behalf of all the fishermen. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. That statement was filled with some pain. If you read it with that context, it's a painful statement that St. Peter just said. They could ignore this man who stood before them, or they could obey. Their choice was no guarantee. It was no guarantee of anything at all. But on faith and faith alone, they obeyed. They obeyed. And because they honored the master with faithfulness, the master honored them by becoming his disciples. Now, let's take a moment to reflect. I, I want us to forget about fishing for a second. I want us all to think about a moment in our lives when we feel like we're at the brink. We're at the edge. Lord, I have tried over and over and over and I continue to fail. We all have these moments. All of us do. We had times when it's difficult to even pray. We sometimes think that God has forgotten about us. Or that he has abandoned us in the middle of our difficulties. We all have these very difficult times in very different areas of our lives. It's hard for us to, to compare. At times, we struggle to do simple things like even wake up and be productive. Other times we struggle through difficult relationships, whether it be a coworker or even our spouses or family members. We sometimes feel like we can't do any more than what we've done. That's it. That's it. So we're at, we're at the end. We struggle to pray. And sometimes people say, I've tried to pray, but it's just too difficult. Or, or I just don't think it works. Sometimes we pray and feel that absolutely nothing is accomplished. We are like the disciples who have fished for God's blessings, and we, kept, we hope to catch the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like patience and joy and gentleness, humility and love, and we've caught nothing. That's what we feel like. The simple truth is, you can't catch fish unless you go fishing. In the same way, when we go through all our struggles, fish just don't like jump out into the boat because you want them to. Relationships don't just fix themselves. Habits don't just develop over without any effort. A prayer doesn't work in theory. If we want to be patient, if we want to be kind, if we want to be gentle and joyful and loving, this is good. This is great, in fact. Now, what are we, do, what are we prepared to do to catch those virtues? To be sure, we do not develop these virtues just because of our own effort. That's not the point of the gospel at all. The point here is that 
we become like the disciples and we continue to be obedient to Christ despite the difficulties and the obstacles that face that we face. After St. Peter said, Lord, we toiled all night and we took nothing. He continued to say, but at your word, I will let down the nets. But at your word. It's amazing. It's an amazing statement coming from St. Peter. So much pain, but yet I obey. At your word. When he was at the end of his rope, he didn't curse God. He didn't blame others. He didn't give up. He obeyed. He simply obeyed. And his obedience allowed the Lord Christ to bless him with abundance. God allows this difficulty to see what the disciples are truly made of. You know, you truly get to know someone's character, not when everything is going their way, but when things are not going smoothly. And our Lord saw what they're truly made of. This is also an opportunity for God to show his amazing goodness. God oftentimes allows these difficulties to demonstrate his care for us and his power over our lives. These difficulties force us to stop relying on our own strength. It weakens us. It humbles us. It brings us to our knees. And they remind us that whatever we have, honestly, we're really weak. I know I am. And the greatest thing that can happen when we have difficulties is that we put God right at the front of our minds. We are forced to acknowledge our creator and we are reminded that without him, we can do nothing. We can't do anything without him. So I hope that we can see these difficulties in our lives as an opportunity for us, to, a chance to say, Lord, I'm weak and I'm tired, but I have no other help but you. What an amazing prayer. The Lord knows our struggles. He knows the struggle in your family. And he is not inconsiderate of your needs. He knows our needs intimately. And yet, he is persistent in his way. He wants us to trust with complete obedience. And he guides us through these difficulties and his tri these tribulations that we face. The Lord asks us over and over to trust him more than we despair over our situation. Trust him more. Don't let that difficult situation become all. He tells us where he tells the disciples to put out into the deep and let up your net for a catch. Sometimes what we feel that we need is sometimes something material. If I just had this money, I'd be fine. If I just had this, this house, everything would be fine. God, well, God will provide these things more than you can imagine. But sometimes what we're really fishing for is the thing that will bring meaning and purpose to our lives. That's the real stuff. That's the real fish. And for these moments, it's prayer that is our form of fishing, and the deep is a reference to our heart. Most of the time, we live and we move and we act with only a superficial knowledge of what's happening in our hearts. The Lord asks his disciples to go deeper, go deeper. He doesn't do this because he wants them to see them suffer. He does this out of love for them because he wants them to have a great catch of fish. But those fish live in the deep. Likewise, he wants us to approach all of our work, especially the task of knowing God, by going deeper, going deeper, because there's nothing worth catching in the, in the shallows. 
But how do we go deeper to fish for God and for his blessings? Well, we start with dedicated quiet time every single day. There has to be quiet time. The use of quiet time to reflect on our sins and to repent, to inspire us to repent. If possible, we take that repentance so seriously that maybe we're even moved to tears. This is how we are allowed to go to the deep and put our nets into the deep. We go deep within ourselves and then we raise up our hands as if we are, as if we are throwing the, a net for blessings. We want to catch the grace of God. If we've never felt God's presence or caught his blessings, maybe it's because we haven't gone fishing through prayer. And if we've prayed, perhaps we have not gone deep enough to find that big catch. So to conclude, we find that our Lord's teachings can be very difficult at times. I don't want to love my neighbor. I don't want to listen to the problem of others. I don't want to spend quality time with my family. I don't want to confess. I don't want to pray. There was once a story that I came across of, of uh, Saint Mother Teresa. She was, um, she was once teaching about loving your spouse. And a lady interrupted her and said, Mother, that's easy for you to say because you're not married. And Mother Teresa turned to her and said, My dear, I am married to Christ, and there are days that is very difficult because he can be very demanding. I don't, I don't want to follow the Lord at times, but then I remember that he doesn't demand things of me in order to benefit himself. He isn't trying to make me suffer. He is trying to teach us and to give us a true experience of the kingdom of God. He is trying to help us. Think about it. If the disciples had said no, what would the Lord have lost? But think now about what the disciples would have lost. They would have lost the greatest catch of fish they would have ever received in their lives. They would have lost the chance to see an amazing miracle. They would have probably have lost the invitation to become disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we ignore or when we disobey the teachings of the Lord, we find that we are the ones who lose. I am. I am the one who lost. Imagine how many opportunities and how many blessings that we miss when we run away or when we ignore the challenges that God puts in front of us. Instead of thinking, why should I trouble myself? Why should I suffer when I can live in comfort? I might instead say to myself, what miracle is the Lord wanting to do in my life? What blessing will I miss if I refuse this opportunity? The Lord Christ stands in our boat and looks at each one of us directly in the eyes and says, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. We have no idea what will get caught if that net is in that net unless we first put the net down into the water. Unless we say with St. Peter, at your word, I'll let down my net. This is the whole spiritual life in a nutshell. To love and to obey Christ. To row further and further from the shore. Further than you're comfortable going. Further than you think you can handle. And when you've gone so far, you throw out your net into the deep water without any idea of what you might catch. Or what you should expect. And after we go through this amazing experience of trusting God with some of the little things in our life, we can become like St. Peter, who is just so overwhelmed by this blessing. 
he asked Christ to depart from him because he's not worthy of even being at the presence of God. If we obey like St. Peter, then we will be amazed like St. Peter by God's love and his care. And we will really begin to feel that we are not worthy of all the kindness and of all the mercy that God constantly shows to us. But all of this requires that we row out, we put out our nets into the deep to pray that when we're lazy, to forgive others who really offended me, to pray for those who speak badly against me, to be patient for those who trouble me, to help those who use me, to visit the poor, to visit the sick, to help those who can't help themselves, to love those who seem impossible to love, to trust God when things don't look good, to give credit to God when, there are, when things are really good, to speak to others about the love that God has for you and to invite others to his holy church. The Lord is waiting and his sea of compassion is rich with gifts and blessings. He has given us the net and if we trust him, he will fill those nets to the brim, overflowing and give us what we need in an abundance to share with others. And glory be to God forever. Amen.